Welcome everyone to today's webinar on using uh, the FreePBX Endpoint Manager. A little bit of the presentation will be the history of our Endpoint Manager, why you should use it, and why it's beneficial. Then I'll be giving a walkthrough of using Endpoint. First thing we're going to talk about is the underlying technology of how we are even able to create an Endpoint Manager. The, the major contributing factor is the SIP or Session Initiation Protocol. Without a standardized protocol such as SIP, the VoIP world would be a cloud of competing standards and incompatible devices. Every phone system and end-user device would utilize incompatible solutions, each trying to best the other to gain market share. SIP is one of the reasons that FreePBX and later our Endpoint Manager were able to become um, so popular. Uh, historically, in the proprietary PBX world, specialized hardware was developed to interact with a specialized PBX chassis or control unit for your phone system. And if you purchased one of these PBXs back in the day, you were typically locked down to three to four models of phones to choose from. And what would usually happen a few years after you purchased your shiny PBX system is you could no longer get those models. Lots of forced obsolescence, meaning you would have to do a forklift upgrade of your entire PBX if you wanted to modernize or sometimes even just to add additional endpoints to your system. Many of you on this call probably have clients now that are stuck with a 20-year-old system and trying to figure out how to move beyond this model. You know, every day at Smooths, we have resellers and end users contact us to replace aging systems with free PBX. Free PBX and Endpoint Manager allow you to easily modernize and standardize on one open system and use many different phones and endpoints from dozens of different manufacturers, letting you decide what's a good fit for your needs and budget not restricting you to a single uh, or handful of device manufacturers. Uh, like I said, proprietary systems typically give you three to four models to choose from. We currently support over 260 devices that are Endpoint Manager. Uh, in fact, we have a waiting list of brands that want to be added to Endpoint Manager. One of the reasons we created Endpoint Manager was because we found even with SIP phones and the SIP protocol having a recognized standard, consistency among manufacturers is not in place. Every manufacturer has a different GUI for configuration and a different layout for their config files, and often even between models from the same manufacturers, different config files and GUI layouts and firmware. Um, you can also, with some manufacturers, see differences from the GUI to the config files. Some have config files that seem to have no relation to the phone's management GUI, or phones that have configured by a config file can no longer be manipulated with a GUI. So even with the ability to utilize dozens of manufacturers' devices in FreePBX, prior to Endpoint Manage, you lost the consistency that using a proprietary piece of hardware platform would provide you. So a major benefit of the FreePBX Endpoint Manager is that we give you one GUI that is standardized across all brands, providing system administrators the same basic management tool no matter which supported hardware they're deploying. In a nutshell, you can manage devices from multiple providers using the same interface. It lessens the learning curve and provides a consistent experience across often inconsistent technologies or device platforms. So Endpoint consolidates most of your work uh, in setting up a phone system by providing a central spot to start building your common settings that you use on all your phones that can be managed once from one location and reused for multiple templates and multiple phones. Uh, you import, in, input your information in one place and then automatically populate that information out across all your devices. Our, our lead developer for Endpoint, Luke, uh, before he joined Smooths, initially built a basic generic config file builder for Grandstream phones to help with writing config files for a large PBX install he was doing. Um, we liked what he did and decided to modify it and add Astro phones. Uh, then we added Cisco endpoints, and it snowballed from there. We continued to add devices and various different manufacturers as we had a need for them and used it internally on our own installs for close to two years before we actually made it available for free PBX. With the manufacturers we partner with, we often now have devices in Endpoint before they're even rolled out or made public. Um, since we started the development project, we've actually had so much experience with building config files, we've become a resource for many manufacturers. They actually consult with us about how to build better config files. We have we provided help to various manufacturers to build better, easier to understand configs that provide consistency across their products. So a few of the benefits of using Endpoint. First, it's easy. 
uh, provisioning phones is one of the more tedious and complicated tasks you'll encounter when configuring a PBX. We make that process simple and intuitive. Uh, we have a lot of end-user customers that actually use Endpoint to manage their own devices. You know, it's fast. It's a great time saver. You don't have to reach out to every handset to configure phones. And if you, if you support systems remotely, you can manage devices directly from the PBX GUI without having to remote in or tunnel to the actual endpoint to make modifications. And like I stated, Endpoint provides a standardized environment, one setup across multiple devices. So some of the limitations and considerations we ran into when uh, developing and designing Endpoint uh, were things like providing different buttons for different users or different time zones. Um, one of our biggest issues was the need for different types of environments to tweak settings based on their own specific needs. Um, there are lots of device settings that we don't expose in the GUI, and we couldn't expose every setting for every device in the GUI. That would take away from the ease of use. But we do provide methods for modifying every setting on a device uh, with base file editing. Uh, this makes it, makes it easy to replicate and quickly modify advanced settings across all of your devices when you need to. Um, another hiccup we found as we uh, started adding more and more devices uh, was the image management. End users love to see their logos on their phones, but like the rest of the settings, manufacturers vary wildly on how they configured this. Even across multiple devices from the same manufacturer, we see huge differences. Some would require or support black and white images, some one bit, some are color, some are grayscale. We actually spent months getting image management to work across most all of the phones and devices that support it. EPM will now automatically convert and install selected images on supported phones. And, and then finally, it was important for us to implement Endpoint Manager with the ability to manage device firmware, not just the configuration files for the devices, but a central location for firmware management. Uh, with firmware management, uh, we allow you to test different firmware versions on specific devices without having to roll out new firmware to all of your endpoints or phones. So when I was thinking about how I wanted to put this presentation together for you, I considered taking screenshots of endpoint in action and walking you through a slideshow, basically showing you perfectly orchestrated pictures of the process. However, there are a couple of reasons I decided I'm going to actually connect to a live system and give you a live presentation. The first and most important one is it shows you all the steps as you will actually see them if you use the software. And we've already had detailed user guides and videos online if you want that experience. Um, and the other reason is taking all the screenshots and making them pretty and adding another 50 to 60 slides to this presentation would be a ton more work. And I would likely lose most of you about three slides into it anyway. So we'll do this live. So you'll see I'm connected to a local install of FreePBX. This is a uh, FreePBX 12 system running Endpoint Manager version 12, which is our latest and most current version as of today. Uh, from the FreePBX 12 dashboard, if we navigate to the settings menu and then open the uh, Endpoint module, uh, the first thing we'll look at is the global settings. Uh, the global settings allow you to input settings that can then be utilized across all your devices when building templates. So you can assign internal and external IP addresses. We reference these fields when building templates. You don't have to put anything in these fields, but it will make your life easier when setting up devices. Uh, the next, next fields on the list are your port management settings. If you notice, these fields can't be modified. Uh, they're reflected from the port settings you configure in the sysadmin settings module. They're listed here as a reference for you. Uh, then we get to the uh, password settings, password section. Uh, admin and user passwords, we default these to six digits to cover some devices that require six digits. Uh, not every device provides passwords for actual end users, but we make this field global to support the devices that do. Uh, we make passwords consistent across the board. This also means that you're not going to be using default device admin passwords. Uh, there was actually a story this year uh, going around where an IT guy with experience in VoIP kept getting harassing telemarketing calls. So when he got a call, he used a bit of social engineering to deduce what kind of devices the telemarketer was calling from. Then he pretended to be an internal phone support guy and 
then have the poor call center agent enter the commands and default password that would reset and wipe their phone configs. Uh, which is pretty funny stuff unless you happen to be the agent or the agent supervisor. Um, so we do force you to define administrative passwords. Um, the next global setting you'll see is the option to enable uh, REST apps or free PBX phone apps default logins. Um, this allows you to configure a default or generic template that phones that support hot desking or the login logout feature can use to provide that functionality. Um, and we'll provision the login logout buttons and app to those phones that don't have users already assigned or mapped to them. Uh, so if you have this option enabled, the system will automatically build default templates for new phones that are not assigned an extension. Um, the final settings are a few deb debugging features. Uh, you can enable EPM to display the registered IP address of phones that are connected to your system, as well as the phone status or load time for that particular device, uh, which will help you quickly see the quality of the connection to a particular endpoint. And finally, there's a value correction option that will filter the inputs you type in the device templates to help you from using unsupported characters or when building your templates. So I'm going to skip to the image management section because before you start building templates or provisioning devices, you'll want to have some images available to add to your supported phones. Uh, in the image management section, you can upload uh, or delete images for phones. So to upload, you would click on the upload option, choose a file from your desktop, and submit it. Uh, we, we currently only support GIF, JPEG, or PNG files with a limit of 256K. We recommend higher resolution files. Uh, we resize and convert images based on the phone template you're building. This means you don't have to customize images for every device. Endpoint will do that for you. The next section we're going to look at is our firmware management page. Uh, depending on your skill level and specific needs, you may or may not need to utilize this section. By default, Endpoint Manager is going to automatically load and build templates with the recommended version of firmware for a particular device as determined in our testing. However, if you want to specify specific versions of firmware or upgrade or downgrade your devices, we provide you with the ability to do so. So EPM does a query of our servers. Um, let's select um, Astrophones. Um, so EPM does a query of our servers and shows all available, all available firmware for a particular brand of devices. Um, as we compile our own firmware packages and we use our own numbering scheme uh, to label these packages. When you drag the firmware into a firmware slot, it shows you the actual manufacturer versions of the firmware. We don't roll every firmware version every manufacturer makes. We roll the firmwares that we have tested and feel are stable. By the time we launch, launch a firmware, both the manufacturer and our development team have tested firmware versions on the actual hardware the firmware is being deployed on. Uh, does this mean that there could potentially still be an odd issue or problem? No. But it does mean that we've tested the firmware and think it to be basically error-free. Uh, if you're the more adventurous bleeding edge type, we do also give you the option to load version 0.0.0, .0, .0 uh, which will build an empty config folder and slot on your PBX. Uh, that would allow you to upload custom firmwares or firmwares that we've not tested directly from the manufacturer. Um, you can select any manufacturer that we support. We provide the two slots. This provides you a slot for your current active production firmware, and the secondary slot is available for testing new firmwares. And when you build your EPM templates, which we'll do next, um, you can assign your testing firmware to just a few phones to enable uh, easy testing. So once you have your uh, global configurations done and if needed, your images uploaded and non-standard or recommended firmware options enabled uh, for your devices, that brings us to the next step of creating templates for your brands. In past versions of Endpoint, we showed you every brand that Endpoint would support. But since that list has grown so much, that takes way too much screen real estate and wasn't particularly useful if you didn't have devices to program from all those manufacturers. So when you first install Endpoint Manager now, you won't see any brands listed. Um, this area will actually be blank. Uh, you'll click on the Add Brand option to select brands do you have not already loaded. And then the first time you add a brand, it will walk you through creating the first device template for that new brand.
So as you can see, these are the brands that we haven't already loaded on this device or on this PBX. So we're going to go ahead and actually go into the Astra brand. And across the top of the page, you'll see some buttons there. The remove button is pretty straightforward. Um, it will delete an existing template from your system. Um, export is an option we created for people that want to build default templates to use across various installs. Export will actually uh, move all settings, including base file modifications, which I'll cover in a minute, that you've made to a template. It will not import images or firmware into the other PBX uh, you're importing to, but it does allow you to migrate devices or replicate setups across multiple PBXs really quickly. Uh, we also allow you to duplicate templates. Uh, this allows you to quickly create new templates that may only have some minor modifications from a previous or similar template. It might be that you just want to modify some button assignments, so instead of rebuilding everything from scratch, just duplicate an existing template. So we'll go ahead and put in a name for our template, Office Phones. Um, you also notice at this point um, that we don't show you all the different model types available from the specific manufacturer. Um, we, we let you first create the base template for that brand. Uh, once submitted, we expose the spe specific models for you to modify. Uh, each model uh, is modified individually and then saved as you go. This makes uh, the endpoint management setup faster as each web page is not pulling down configs for every model type. On older versions of Endpoint, this would take sometimes take three to four minutes just to load this configuration screen as we were pulling down settings for every available device uh, from an individual brand or manufacturer. Um, we also want to make sure to modify your templates in smaller pieces. That way, if you encounter a problem, you wouldn't potentially waste lots of time entering modifications only to find your settings weren't saved. So uh, you start out with general settings, uh, type in your template name. Um, then your destination address, which you can type in or pull from the global settings. Uh, we propagate the time server and allow you to modify, modify many settings across all devices for the brand. If you don't select any of these options, um, we actually um, will build the template with the default settings that we think are best. For example, with the Astra, now, well now my telephones, uh, you see the option to switch focus to ringing line. The default configuration out of the box on Astra phones is when you get an incoming call on an Astra handset, the phone will make you take the new call before disposing of the call you're already on. In our experience, we find that most end users and receptionists in particular would like to, to be able to transfer or otherwise take action on the existing call before moving to the new caller. So by default, we enable that setting. Um, another setting you'll find that varies across manufacturers is the time zone settings. We allow you to set time zones directly in Endpoint Manager. Um, we've also added support for daylight savings time support in EPM. I'll go ahead and set my time zone. Enable daylight savings time. Um, of course, not every device uh, will honor that, but we're working with many manufacturers to, pr to pr provide support for DST. Uh, it's just something that some manufacturers didn't consider when they were designing their phone's firmware. Um, this is also where you'll select the image that you want displayed on the background of the phone. So we'll go ahead and add our SIP station logo. And you can then choose, uh, depending on the phone models you're provisioning, um, we allow you to set up provisioning uh, with TFTP, FTP, and HTTP. And we're also working on supporting HTTPS. It's a bit more complicated from implementing in a consistent manner, but it's something we have on the roadmap to put in place. Um, so we'll just choose TFTP. Choose a line label. Uh, we actually want the front of the phone to give us the name and the extension. Uh, multicast addresses, you can enter a multicast if your device supports it. Um, you can actually enter multiple multicast addresses uh, separated uh, on the single line. Um, and then you select your firmware version. And we'll just use slot one.
And uh, note that not every configurable option available for each type of device directly in the GUI, is directly in the GUI. As we stated, we try to make the provisioning as intuitive as possible. So your phones may have settings that are not shown in this GUI. Uh, these can still be modified with the base file edit I'll discuss later. So once you save the base template, um, general settings would now enable you to view the individual models available under that manufacturer. Um, one last thing for the initial setup that pops up after you make your first save is the default template option. Uh, this is the toggle that specifies uh, that the template will be enabled as the default template used by the REST apps log in log out feature. Uh, it will automatically assign phones not assigned an extension this template so they can then proceed to be logged into the device. So we continue with the setup of the template by selecting a phone model uh, to start building out the template. We, we will select the 6737i. You'll notice that a new overlay pops up uh, with the specifics for the phone you're building. You can click on the image of the device, or actually hover over the image of the device to confirm you have the correct device. And notice we've color coded the buttons in this image. Uh, the blue buttons are soft keys, and the top buttons are color coded to match the top soft keys. Uh, this is just a little extra we've done to help you when building templates. So on our soft keys, we try to give you all the supported options uh, that each manufacturer supports. Doesn't necessarily mean that all, on all phones these options will be hooked into FreePBX, as some devices have options that don't relate to our platform. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is create a BLF. Uh, then we'll add a couple of phone apps. So let's just create a quick BLF here. And many phones will support multiple accounts. Uh, so we'll just assign this as account one. Maybe a little lag on this, so I'll try to wait as the uh, screen loads. So we'll add a voicemail. So I've added the login option as well as a, uh, the voicemail app. And notice that uh, while we're typing up the templates, if we want to rearrange entries, we can drag and drop them. Um, and Endpoint is smart enough to uh, reorder and map them in the order we specify. So that's how you build your templates. Um, we can go in here and save this model. There's the screen closes. We show available, this model as an available phone now. Um, we save the template and rebuild the configs. So that's how you build your templates. The next thing we have to do is map your extensions to a template. This can be done in several ways. Uh, before I review those, you'll also need to consider the location of your PBX relative to your phones and endpoints. Um, because uh, once you have a template created, you'll have to have some way to set your phones to provision to the PBX. Phones can be pointed to your PBX in several ways. If you control DHCP on your network and you're using TFTP to download your phone configurations, you can enable option 66 on your DHCP settings to automatically point your phones to your PBX uh, for automatic provisioning. Uh, outside of that, we also have easier to read graphical guides showing screenshots that walk you through how to modify your phones uh, to point to your PBX for provisioning. You can view all of those settings specific for every device that Endpoint supports directly on the free PBX wiki. So to um, first method to generate a phone config is to do a network scan. If your PBX is local to your phones and on the same subnet, you can actually have your PBX scan for those devices. So the PBX will do a quick in-map scan of the network, and based on the MAC addresses it finds, it will provide you with a list of the manufacturer of the devices that are not already mapped to an extension. 
uh, you'll then select an extension to assign to this device. So we'll take this bottom phone and we'll assign it to uh, digit. Um, select the template, our new office phones, and then select the phone model type, which is the 6737i. Once you make these assignments and save the configs, um, the, the endpoint manager will generate the config files for that setting. And the endpoints will then be listed in the extension mapping page. Um, the second way to generate configs for devices is to click on the extension mapping section of endpoint. This section will show you all the devices that have config files already built, including the one we just added. You can then click on the Add Extension button to add more devices. It works in the same manner as before. You just go through the steps. So we want to add uh, 6730, choose an Astra 6730 template, 6730i, and put in your MAC address. select the account, and then save it. And that will build your config files for that extension and that device. We also have the ability to export and import list of endpoints, uh, which is the third way of adding endpoints. Uh, this allows you to export a list of extensions to a CSV file, which I will do quickly. Uh, edit the CSV and then re-import quickly, adding multiple devices to your system in one shot. Uh, we have some resellers that consistently do a lot of large installs, and they'll actually just scan in the MAC addresses using a barcode reader directly into the CSV, and then assign templates and extensions and quickly provision hundreds of users in just a matter of minutes. Um, And the fourth option to add devices to endpoint is directly from the extension page. So when you create an extension, which we'll go ahead and submit, uh, you can map it to a device at the same time you can create it. So you just put in your extension number. And once you scroll down, you can actually see in the endpoint section that you have um, selections available for brand, MAC address, uh, the template that you want to use, and the models. So once you submit that, it then saves it to your endpoint map. So you see there's lots of ways to build and apply templates and customize your workflow and actually use Endpoint Manager uh, in ways that will save you the most time and work best for your particular situation. Uh, the last thing I want to quickly cover is um, base file edits. Um, base file edits are probably one of the most powerful features of Endpoint for those that need it. It allows you to make configuration changes to templates for settings that we don't expose in the GUI. One of the common uses is for configuring devices to use VLANs. Uh, to, modif you know, to modify a template, uh, you start by clicking on the base file edit settings. Um, open the templates you want to modify. Uh, select the specific phone model. And you'll see a list of all the configurations that are included in our config file. Uh, by clicking on one of these uh, settings, you'll see that what the current default settings are. Um, I'll go ahead and open the first one. Um, in this example, the admin password is a variable that we're passing from the global configs. It's the first thing we did when we set up our global configs. Uh, we can actually modify it to be a default that's different from the global variable we defined earlier. So, if, for example, you want all your Astra phones to have a different global password than your Digium phones, you can modify that here. Um, so we'll go in and to edit this value, type in a new password.
and click change base file. And if you scroll down, give it a second to catch up. Uh, if you scroll down, um, you'll see that this setting is saved at the end and highlighted in red to let you know that it has been modified from the default. Um, if you look at all the options that you can customize, you can quickly see why we don't expose every device option in the basic endpoint GUI. But with base file editing, you can go in and customize every aspect of your phone's configuration as well as define additional parameters you want to send to the phones. For example, you can uh, go in and add entries to add VLAN parameters or define ringtones and so on. Uh, this is definitely an advanced option and, and one you may never use, but for those that need it, it's just like every aspect of endpoint, it's a huge time saver uh, and makes your systems easy to replicate and support. So the uh, final thing I want to show you today is our latest add-on for endpoint. Um, I've showed you how to create templates and lots of ways to apply them. to your devices, uh, but unless you're completely into micromanaging every aspect of your system or completely uh, control freak, you may want to consider our new uh, EPM for UCP module. Uh, what this module does, um, it's an endpoint manager plugin that allows the new user control panel on FreePBX 12 and above. Uh, if you take a look at the screenshot, you'll see that it allows you your end users to customize their own phone template uh, without having uh, administrative GUI access to your PBX. Uh, this frees administrators from having to make every configuration change for every user and allows users greater control and flexibility of their own communications. So you can see from the user control panel, I can go in and modify um, various settings and I can even drag and drop and move, move items around. and I can save and restart the phone to upload the changes to, to my device and or reset it back to the uh, default template. So the user control panel helps you put the, your users in control of their devices. And of course, um, in addition to endpoint, the most popular add-on for endpoint manager is our phone apps, uh, which can be configured and added to templates within endpoint. Uh, we have a lot of documentation uh, on our wiki and on our website about, about these apps. Um, so that's it for Endpoint. For obvious reasons, we don't offer trials of Endpoint, uh, but we do make the licensing costs extremely affordable for everything that it's providing. And for the amount of ongoing development and work we do to enhance this software on a regular basis, it's a very affordable platform. Um, we also offer system builder bundles that include EPM, phone apps, uh, sysadmin pro, and extension routing modules, and a system builder plus module that includes even more for uh, greater savings. So I'm going to go ahead and call this webinar, but um, you can always open up a chat at smoothcom.com or call into our sales department at 920-886-8130 or open up a cell support ticket with any additional questions that you might have offline. Thank you very much for attending and have a great day.